it's time to start practicing with some 40 for a couple of USPSA matches. So I've got everything I need here to swap. 11 pound recoil spring, six pounds what goes with any nine mil or 38 super comp round, regardless if it's single port, three port, or iron sights. 11 pound is for the iron sight 40 barrel. I keep my magazine straight by black nitriding all the nine mil 38 mags and not black nitriding all the 40 mags. Got these from McMaster. This is what I'm going to use to swap everything over. These are a T uh, Torx Plus 10. We have a 560 force and then a two and a half millimeter that is going to be for the dot with the razor. So the screws on there are two and a half millimeter. I like these extended shanks on here because you don't have any a tendency to rub on anything, cause any issues. When switching to 40, I am going to swap in a different breech block, and when I swap it in, we're going to be using the 564s here. So, for starters, the gun is clean. Uh, well, clear, I should say. It's dirty as hell. So I'm going to clean it while I do this, and I'll break up the videos in little bits for it. One tool that makes this pretty easy, I'll put this against the black so you can see it, is a paper clip, a bent tip, to lock out the guide rod. Guide rod is locked out. It's ready for disassembly. With the guide rod locked out, the slide stop should come out very easy with very little resistance, leaving the locking block to come out. I typically will do this with the gun upside down, pulling it across, and that keeps the locking block from falling anywhere. Make things simple. Uh, we are gonna need to pull the rear sight to swap the breech block here. We are also going to swap the 11 pound recoil spring onto this guide rod. There is a good amount of pressure, so make sure you're not going to sling that cap off of the guide rod uh, up into the air and into God knows where. Recoil spring is swapped out here, and now I'm ready to pull the two Torx Plus size 10 screws from here. Those are a 0.300 length. They are not a 3 8 so if you do end up replacing them, if you mark the threads or something like that, make sure they're shortened to the correct length. I'm going to use this and a regular screwdriver instead of torquing my torque wrench backwards. Now that the rear sight module is removed, these two screws here hold your breech block. This is the 40 breech block here which we'll swap in in place of the 938 block here. And those can be a little over hand tight. They, don't not, they do not need to be torqued down to 22 inch pounds like the rear sight does. And when we take that out, it'll be an easy swap from the bottom of the slide where it's held in. You can see the immediate difference between the nine and the 40 blocks here with the left side here being the nine mil and the right being the 40. There's a little more of a relief here to allow for the larger case. I did make the mistake of running the 40 breech block with the 9mm and forgetting to take it out, and the gun actually did still run. It's not the recommended fashion, but it does still function. When you place the breech block down in here, you're going to have the grooved side coming up with this end going toward where the case is going in. So if it, you can read it, it's wrong. Slide it in, snug it all the way to the back, and it's ready to tighten. With the 40 breech block installed, we can now put on the rear sight and torque these to 21 to 22 inch pounds. Torque driver like one from Vortex Optics like this works really well, and the McMaster torque bits are a Torx Plus and do fit this a little tighter, so you're less likely to strip these out. 22 inch pounds is about perfect. Okay, now everything is ready for assembly. We're going to assemble this part in last. The barrel is going to slide in from the front. This is going to slide in from the back coming through here, and this is going to sit on top. Slide stop goes in last, and we're going to assemble the whole thing upside down. Lubricating these guns is always a great idea. They run better when wet. They 
They run great when dry, but everything runs better wet as far as these go. I do put a little bit of oil around here. Around the barrel. And on the functioning surfaces with the locking block. Slide that in from the front. The guide rod and spring are going to slide in the rear here and sit right there. Now the locking block is the last piece to go in before we go to mate the upper and lower. The locking block is going to seat just like this. Before I do that, make sure I have oil on these surfaces so that it will mate together and it will kind of stick while wet and will continue to function wet while the gun's functioning. We're going to assemble everything upside down here because it keeps the locking block from falling out. Everything here is held in place, a light push down on the barrel, and that opens up for the slide stop to come in. If we start the slide stop a little early, then when we pull back and align with the notch in the slide, easy assembly happens. The slide stop installed, shouldn't take more than a light push to get it to clear. Now all we have to do is pull the slide back to release the paper clip, and we are ready to go to the range. Remember which mags go with which, if you're shooting both 9 and 40. Just one kick-ass little system.